Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I am Tahir Dinsa, and you are watching ST TV. Agriculture is very important for Pakistan. Even today, after the dwindling share of agriculture in overall economy, still they say it is around 21 percent. But a lot of labor is employed, more labor than the service sector and other sector. What does it mean? It means it's not very productive. Productivity is a major issue. That is the reason. that the countries are moving towards corporate farming and precision farming and what not we have today with us dr kashif salik who is an expert in this area and uh, he's given quite a massive feedback to the organizations and the person uh, even at the sovereign level who are working on the um, precision agriculture and all that dr kashif say something about just two three lines ke what do you think agriculture is need to be transformed in a way to get better productivity and to make it more beneficial for pakistan um thank you uh, dinsa saab for inviting me uh, to discuss on the agriculture of pakistan uh, it actually just you mentioned that uh, this is very important topic uh, particularly uh, in terms of uh, the times of climate change and also uh rising uh floods and extreme events this is this this area is become very more important where the productivity as you rightly mentioned that is declining along with other non climate factors but of course climate factors are very important uh but most important thing uh, if you if you consider that this is the agriculture sector is the sector which actually uh, uh boosting our economy Uh, it's it's uh, it's it's growth in agriculture it's actually depicted in our national growth so its contribution in our national economy is quite high if co- of course it's uh, it's still 19% or 20% but and it's a uh, uh, labor per, uh, uh, participation ratio is just 43 or uh, near 40% but in terms of their contribution to the national growth it's quite high but there are the other issues uh, which actually need to be t- taken care of uh, one of the important issue is uh, uh, the rising rise of uh, agriculture productivity so, so so that's very important it has become the buzzword yes of course china has uh, you know quite successfully transformed its agriculture although they need to import a lot of food to cater to the food needs of uh, their you know more than a billion plus people but they have and uh, corporate farming and uh, precision agriculture is uh, has also become a buzzword israel is doing wonders through precision on a very land they don't have land at all a very limited land but they produces you know that's a lot productivity and now i've heard that you are quite uh, in a very intense way you are engaged with someone at an at the national level in pakistan and what's that actually uh, and how what does we learn from china there yeah actually uh, two three in, uh, things are very important first is that uh, rural population uh, we have 62% of population uh, is living in rural areas that's very important and most of them about 6 uh, about 60% of this 62% rural population is landless populations so first thing is that uh, what we can do from uh, that population because that population is uh, living in poverty unemployment and less education and less health uh, opportunities are available so what they actually uh, do uh, uh right now in uh, living in in uh, uh, rural areas so that's the one thing that we need to take them into board for rural development how we can bring those people to the rural development that's a key questions so here i will come back to this point uh uh before, uh, before that i will just uh, try to connect uh, that our productivity is declining because of climate change because of non climate factors just like the poor seeds and soil uh, fertility and blah blah things but the important thing is that our productivity is low how we can improve our productivity is the perce- is one one solution is the perce- technology is, yeah is the technology and one is the precision agriculture technologies there are number of technologies there are drones and there are 
uh, sensors and uh, uh, number of uh, other uh, decision support system which includes the uh, use of GIS remote sensing and blah blah things. So that's how you can improve your uh, productivity. But important thing is that uh, how we can get uh, uh, these things from China. What, what actually we need from China is uh, one important thing is the use of drones. Because in, in Pakistan agriculture, uh, the labor is uh, less efficient, their human capital or their, their, uh, their, uh, their capacity to uh, apply different form inputs are quite, quite compromising. So, uh, so precision applications actually enhance our productivity. But what we can do from this uh, labor, which can maybe uh, lay off because of this uh, introduction of the uh, technologies in the agriculture, so one option is to develop the service industry in Pakistan, uh, a rural service industry where they, these rural young uh, population can be trained uh, uh, as an entrepreneur or as an expert or as a person who can use his soft skills. Or soft skills and so so this is can uh, become entrepreneur. Become a mechanic of uh, different things. So so this way we can engage those rural youth in, and bring back to the agriculture, which are actually moving out from agriculture. So the labor that is going to be surplus should be trained on skills which are required in the agriculture and then they are uh, uh, transported back yes. to the rural area. So the, what you are saying that it's going to affect uh, the whole supply chain. Yeah. So we need systems, food. China has uh, used the food system revolution. Do you think we need to tinker here and there with the food system as well or define food system uh, precisely, exclusively for the precision agriculture? Actually, uh, if we talk about the food system, it's a whole, uh, a whole bunch of activities which we can talk about. But right now, I'm focusing on that how we can learn from the China. It's, it's For me, it's, it's the technology uh, where the Chinese have more edge on it. For example, the drones. Uh, Pakistan right now have... Uh, and uh, is uh, has lack of drones in 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 agriculture so if bringing drones and uh, man drone manufacturing particularly uh, that helps to transform our agriculture in pakistan in terms of pesticide application in terms of um, uh, seed applications and variable rate application what we call it that and in term of fertilizer data, is quite you can just data put, collection as yeah, well data collection uh, by the use of sensors so a so lot of technology we can get from china and uh, uh, through systematic approach we can apply this uh, uh, technology in pakistan agriculture. the transformation that has come in the china is i mean there's another niche which is climate smart you know that climate is changing for example right now when approaching i mean the spring is almost gone but today it's the i mean maybe the first day when the summer is coming so it is delayed in punjabi they say na pachetri mm -hmm. uh, getri and pachetri so the do you think that the Ch china has done something with technology to bring the climate smart agriculture can we learn from them as well i think uh, the most important thing is data if you have a data a data of climate but the change. data is ever changing. Yeah, it's ever changing. But of how you analyze the data, that's it. if you don't know the computation technologies, how uh, and how it can be applied to the uh, actual field uh, field operations, then then how you can say that uh, uh, you can apply the data. So computation is very important, and how you apply uh, in terms of technology, that's very important. What I am talking about is the decision support systems. So China has developed uh, excellent decision support system using the GIS remote sensing, using the sensor data, drones data, soil fertility data, and that data can be uh, synchronized to or integrated together to uh, uh, to have a uh, variate, variable rate applications in agriculture through which we can not only save the uh, uh, input uh, agriculture input but also increase the efficiency of the agriculture. Right. Thank you very much. So the bottom line is Pakistan started agriculture, this revolution we see now, we can feed our people that started, that is result, the green revolution was started in early 60s. 
and that was very pattern the water was uh, made available through dams and the four crops pattern typical and tractors and harvesters and all that that was the cutting edge technology at that time harvesters and tractors and all that so now and the manual labor as well now they are it is fast becoming very obsolete now the big farms are in vogue and the precision agriculture that reduces the size of labor in most developed agriculture countries they say they they have brought it down to 9% labor china has done something very good obviously we can learn from them if we go ahead and it's up to the expert and the policy maker to learn and harness it for to our local needs that's all for now looking forward to see you in the next program bye for now Thank you.